Yo, what's up guys? It's been a long time since we had a Human Against Night Elf game on this channel. And we've got nothing better than the very best Warcraft 3 player in the world, the best, the best Night Elf player in the world, Moon, against someone that sounds a lot like him, Musang Sung. But is actually AKA Sok. S O K. Or as I like to say, it's okay. So it's okay against Moon. Sok, I think, is the best human in the world right now. But what about name player A, B, C, D, E, F? I think it's Sok. There are some other good humans. I think Sok has been showing the most creativity, the most resilience, the most new strategies, and the highest level performance. He's been giving Happy a run for his money. He's been beating players of different matchups, including Undeads, Orcs. Now let's see how he gets on against Night Elf. In a time where there were many, many top Night Elf players like Moon, Soju, Remind, and others, there were always people that are better at one matchup and people better at another matchup. Uh, which Night Elf is the best against Undead? Which Night Elf is the best? Oh, almost did the Ancient of War deny, but he didn't quite. And I always thought that Moon was particularly good in the matchup against Undead and Human. Specifically, his versus Human matchup has never been rivaled by anyone else as a Night Elf player, in my opinion. Closest maybe that came was uh, Soju in his prime, which some people will know is also the name of a alcoholic beverage, a rice wine from Korea. And I'm assuming that's where he got his inspiration for his name, if not inspiration for his playstyle, because his playstyle was pretty clean and not at all like drunken boxing or drunken playing. So we've got a game here, Moon against uh, Sok. Sok immediately went to creep his natural expansion, but you'll note that he did not immediately throw up the expansion, and this is because he did not want to make himself immediately weak against the potential attack. Additionally, when you immediately creep the natural expansion with four militia, five militia, you typically don't have the money yet to expand. And even if you do, you would be sacrificing some continuous peasant or footman production. So here's what he does instead. He makes sure that he cannot be caught with his pants down later by delaying his expansion creeping, which is sometimes done as a, let's say, a premeditated response against pressure is that you first take the first green cap then the second then you take the expansion and then it lines up with your resources but the problem with that is by that time a player can already come in and harass you and it's going to cast you your uh, expansion timing maybe to get a cancel on your town hall so he creeps the thing he power builds a scout tower turns it into an ivory tower which is a smaller investment in case of immediate heavy pressure he does one gold return trip with five of his peasants, then he makes it. Meanwhile, he's had non-stop peasant and footman production for a healthy pressure, for a healthy uh, pressure with the footman, and for a healthy lumber income. And note how the town hall is actually touching the corner of the tree, which allows peasants to walk by, but heroes not. So he had Moon's Demon Hunter fully committed to trying to kill the peasant, <laughs> went right past the edge, and the peasant stayed alive. It's those kind of fine details that make for some excellent Warcraft 3 play and uh, help tie the little things together and just makes your playstyle a little bit better. So he has saved the peasant for now. It may die later, but for now it's still working. So we go in with the tech, five minutes and nine seconds of the replay time. Uh, tech to tier two. Moon, of course, has sacrificed the fast expo in lieu of a fast uh, tier two. He's at tier two now. I think he's gonna get a Naga Sea Witch. It just deals with pressure the best. Panda can feel attractive, but really falls off if the opponent has Moss Spellbreakers. It also falls off against Heavy Pressure, where you're forced to continually use level 1 Fire Breath. So Naga Sea Witch, good defense against Harassment. Note that Sok has not killed a single unit yet, outside of the three creeps that he took. He's still level 1. He has detonated some Wisps, but he never got the last hit on it. Meanwhile, Moon did make a tier 1.5 expansion as well. Tier 1.5 is, of course, a fiction, but that's what I call it when you make an expansion about halfway on route to your tier 2 upgrade. His Tree of Life is finished and is standing underneath his expansion, but he currently is not affording himself the freedom to go there to creep the expansion. Uh, there we go! It's the peasant that got away, but it did some work in the meantime. It just shows that workplace safety is important. 
you can keep your workers alive a little bit longer. Even if they die soon after, they can still have done a little bit of extra productivity that's going to help the company meet its uh, profit margins. So Sock, definitely an in inspirational boss. Running away, he's going to get blocked by the squirrel! He got blocked by the squirrel, which uh, actually gives Demon Hunter the mana burn opportunity because essentially Demon and Archmage have the same movement speed. They both have boots, so they have the same movement speed. But Demon has better turning speed than any hero in the game as far as I know. And also mana burn snapshots your maximum range. Even if the unit goes out of range, it's already still going to cast once it starts. It's because it has a very small cast point. And so any turns you make, any blocks, any moves you make, he'll be watching you. And he is going to uh, get that mana burn off. So that was a cancel on clarity regen scroll. I would say about at 20% of its uh, duration expended. So he lost 80% of its duration. Regen scroll clarity is 70 and 100 gold. It's 170. So I would say that mana burn was worth about uh, 135 gold. All because of this squirrel. The 135 gold squirrel. That's why in some countries squirrels are considered vermin. Even though I, I'm excited. I saw my first live squirrel in the wild in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. When I was visiting my family for the first time there for a work related. No, not work related. School related extracurricular work experience trip. Where I was able to stay with family. And I did some landscaping for PM landscaping in Pennsylvania. Uh, mulching people's lawn and whatnot and uh, then i saw a squirrel a live squirrel i'd never seen it in the netherlands in fact i thought they didn't exist in the netherlands i now know that it was a naive and foolish take they do exist but i just lived in a city urban area where i never got to see them since then i have seen them in the netherlands so i can put to rest the paranoia that the netherlands is squirrelless and i know this has been a big concern for people and i can now uh, acquiesce those concerns that we do in fact have wild squirrels, though I have not yet managed to catch one. Pitlord second is definitely different. It's very strange, very strange. Uh, no bears that I know of, Mighty Blues, in the ne Netherlands. Yeah, Pitlord second, I don't get it, to be honest. So, <laughs> why? All right, there is mana burn. Mana burn removes mana. People with no mana cannot cast spells, which makes passives better. So maybe if you get a strong passive, that can be good. So you've got Mountain King with Bash, which is a bonus 25 damage, a chance for bonus 25 damage and a stun. Pitlord spreads his damage around with a cleave that goes up to 90% or 95%, I believe even. So I would say that cleave is a better passive than Bash. He's also a very tanky boy. He has a little bit more strength and health than a Mountain King. A bit harder to kill. So maybe that's just what he's thinking. He's doing cleave damage to Dryads, Archers, Bears and whatnot. So long as he faces the right way. And what's more, cleave is true damage. So if you hit a, a Dryad or an Archer, it's dealing true damage that goes straight to the back. To like a hero, circumventing essentially their hero armor type and amount. So it's very, very valuable. Chaos damage is almost like cleave damage in that it's really going to happen and unmitigated by types and amounts. It's very, very strong. What a tanky boy. Yep. What a foolish ploy to make such a tanky boy. Meanwhile, Sok has loads of money. You can see in the top left the purple human profile picture. He's staying at 50 population. Saving up a lot of money. Um, hasn't really started a lot of upgrades yet from what I can tell. It's a double sanctum plus barracks rifle uh, caster combination build. Technically, the blacksmith should be pumping away at the units. Uh, immolation and frost, immolation and fork lightning do, of course, circumvent uh, armor upgrades, but attack upgrades are always good. Perhaps he's not getting any because he's got a very clear idea of the amount of units he wants to attack with and the amount of heal scrolls he wants to have. So it's like, I want 80 population. I found that, th that it's better than upgrades because... I don't know, it doesn't make... I don't know exactly. Maybe Pitlord's the source of his damage. You can see he's not making any upgrades at all. It feels to me like he's just going to go straight for a 90 population army. And maybe he's thinking like, 
priests and sorks don't benefit from upgrades. Rifles and breakers have four different upgrades. So I'm just not going to get any. But I, usually in this situation what you see is one rifleman attack upgrade, one spellbreaker attack upgrade. I know it's weird. They seem like the melee-ish kind of tank, therefore should have uh, armor upgrade. But you know, generally attack upgrade is a little bit better in games uh, like this. And then you see the one spellbreaker armor upgrade. So it's going to be like one attack for rifles, one one for breakers, first attack then armor. But he's not getting any of that. He just wants as many units as possible. And let's see how it works out. Moon is applying his usual Dryad pressure. Uh, Demon Hunter's in the back line. Uh, no Blacksmith upgrades, but also no Immolation yet for the Demon Hunter. And meanwhile, we're getting some pretty good damage on the Dryads. Uh, interestingly, he's keeping his Rifle Casters away from the Naga Dryads so that nothing can be forked lightninged. He's letting his entire Rifle Caster army keep the Demon Hunter. Oh no, he killed his own priest. I don't believe that's intended. Maybe uh, that priest touched a little peasant and uh, he wanted to make sure to keep his reputation pure so he purged him from the sanctum. Which is good. I agree with this kind of vigilante justice in a fantasy world, of course, in a fantasy world. Uh, one rifle attack upgrade finished. I see the blacksmith is turning away now, so it was probably more of an oversight due to the stress of playing against Moon. Sok simultaneously creeps while holding off light, naga, and dryad pressure. Nets him a devotion aura. I rate that very, uh, very, very usefully. I rate that very, very usefully. That's armor on everybody. Heroes, elemental, sorks, and priests that normally never get armor upgrades. Breakers, rifles, it's great. Moon sets up for the long game. Makes a uh, third tree of life. Well, his main tree is a tree of eternity. It's a second tree of life. Third base, anyway. A workshop here. Could be multiple reasons for the workshop. Uh, mortar team or flying machines. I'm going to say it was most likely for mortar teams. And here's why. Moon and in general night elves tend to have more pressure on your bases than you on theirs. Wisps are protected, so it takes a while to free an entangled gold mine and then get to the wisps inside. Uh, peasants are exposed, so they can die. And rifle breakers and casters don't have a lot of building damage. So even if you didn't use mortars for attacking dryads, and you will, but even if you didn't, it would be a way to put the timer on the tree of life from afar. Very useful. Love the zeppelin coming in here. The, the subtle ivory tower pressure here as well. Uh, quite helpful. But with mountain giants coming out in lieu of bears, we have a very tanky front line that may not have roar and rejuvenation and the damage of bears, but is far tankier than what bears are. Maybe this is also expected by Sok, that this is Moon's style right now. Oh, I love the Zeppelin pickups. One rifle safe, dropped in the back, another rifle. Almost got to the breaker. He did a heal scroll, but I believe Archmage was out of position to heal the breaker. Very nice. Repositioning his units to the back. Naga and Demon now using Orb of Venom attacks on the uh, Zeppelin to pressure it away. It's an important part of Sock's defense. I think this is why the Pit Lord is also in the game. Very tanky frontline. And it actually does really good damage on Mountain Giants with the Cleave attack. Very lovely micro there with the Zeppelin. You see Zeppelins like this, you think, why would you ever play without one? Moon is up to 80 population. His Tree of Life is actually waiting at the third base, ready for uh, rooting. I'm rooting for it, but Moon is not yet. Moon might be losing his second base. Is he going to make a third or will he do a last ditch effort to defend? Because this human army seems really, really tough. Archmage in front. There's the first mortar team. Usually Moon jumps into the mortar with all his dryads to attack it from up close so he doesn't get fired at from afar. However, with this amount of riflemen, it's going to be pretty hard. Is a mountain giant going to fall? Whoa. Okay. okay. I got so excited. I didn't even see the Archmage falling. He killed a mountain giant. Lost his Archmage. Worth? Question mark. 
And it's getting attacked again. The positioning on the Archmage is unacceptable. Ah, and he has to TP out. Bitlord! Bitlord! Whoa. One regen scroll, instantly go again. Now, Sok has the upgrades that I recommended, which is the 111. I recommend it. Look at me. Nostradamus, Nostragrubus. Meanwhile, the Tree of Life started creeping by itself. He had to send in the Shredder to go and help as well. He's pretty much finished that camp. I'd love to have an expansion that can clear a camp itself as an orc. Upgrades for Moon are monstrous. I'm assuming he has resistant skin as well as hardened skin on mountain giants. A hardened skin. Ah, that's on purpose, by the way. He's freeing up food for better things. Those archers, they serve their purpose. Even though they served very well and loyally, this is not recognized by great honors. Love the fact that even to this day, Sok still has his base fully walled off. You could start to lapse on such safety measures, and had he done so, he would have lost his peasant line. Oh, he's gonna get the granite golem. He's in very bad position for Sok. Thank you very much, says Moon. Yoinks it. Takes the endurance horror. The Zeppelin with the double breaker hat pickup. Fiddler comes back down again. Break and a sword dropping low. There's a fork lightning. Sork falls. Mortar currently attacking the wrong thing. It's attacking the Naga. Overall, not too many losses for either. But it's going to feel like a kick in the balls for Sock that he basically handed Granite Golem and Endurance are on a silver platter. That is a very, very tough thing to see. Seeing as how Endurance would have been so good for either of them. Hero levels definitely much better for Moon. It amazes me to see how he can manage to expand so late and still keep up with pressure and stay safe against uh, such a bustling, such a bussing, a human army. Didn't even make any ancient protectors. Huh? Just the uh, staff, Moonwell. He crept well, had the heel stone. Note how the Archmage went for Brilliance too. Doesn't want to give too much XP to Dryads that are going to abolish Water Elementals anyway. And Moon with the Creepjack. Soon, perhaps. No, no Creepjack. Okay. He didn't know he's in the corner. He's more paranoid that Sok might be trying to take the other Granite Golem quickly. Lovely item for Pitlord. Claws of Attack plus 8. He's got a lot of damage on him. Lacking a little bit of survivability. It would do really well for him to find something like a Ring of Protection plus three from this camp that he's taking now. Meanwhile, he is giving away the Granite Golem, uh, most likely. Unless he gets there in time. He might be. Yeah, there he is. Not so fast. Not so fast, old man. Comes in. <laughs> the Golem helps out. Basically stuns the Demon Hunter in the uh, Blizzard. Zeppelin crucial here to keep alive the Pitlord. Moon decides to quickly cheese and take the Granite Golem and run away and you will never believe what he found. The second best item he could find already has the Endurance. Would have loved Unholy Aura for double speed Aura in, in addition to attack speed and healing speed. But he got the next best thing. Brilliant Aura. Fantastic. Lots of extra mana on his heroes and dryads. And essentially for Night Elf, if they are making proper use of their uh, Moonwells, having extra mana actually saves them some Moonwell juice, which gives them more healing in return. Now with uh, Moon's three bases against two from Sok, both have pumped over 80 population to go to 90, 90 plus. 99 for Sok here, completely eschewing a third base just for a bigger attack. He's got 111 upgrades, that's it. Came in with a couple of knights as well, and he's got inner fire. Definitely needs Zeppelin. He orders the blizzard to be cast. Hit his own knights a bit with it. Managed to staff one knight away. The Zeppelin is here. Uh, currently not. Oh, no, there's no Zeppelin. It's a flying machine. And this is very bad for Sok. He's lost two knights already. Pitlord almost dead. Zeppelin comes back in. Flying machine there to uh, attack the fairy dragons. The blizzard's doing some good work, and the demon hunter trying to. Actually finding it kind of hard to stay alive. 
Nice heal scroll, keeping the knight and rifle alive a bit more, but Blizzard's doing the opposite. Nearly taking that knight down. Honestly, really hard to see who's going to be able to win. It does seem like the backline of Inner Fire Rifleman is uh, doing some serious work in. And the knights now get a second armor upgrade, which is really good and also affects spell breakers and militia, though not peasants. Just needs to start stop blizzarding his own knights. No amount of armor upgrades will save him from that. Now, this is a very bad position for Sok. The only reason this would be good is if he actually decided to definitively fin finish off the tree. Sacrificing position because he's going to TP out anyway. This is a very bad position to fight. And even like attacking the tree and then TPing out wouldn't be a good play. It's all about beating the army here for him. Because there is another base. Very nice saving on those units. Many, many red units. A regen scroll should get them back to life. But I'm starting to get worried a bit for Sok's resources running out. Meanwhile, Moon. No! No. He killed a mountain giant to save up food to go back to low upkeep. Okay. Never seen that before. I mean, I appreciate money as much as the next Warcraft 3 player, but uh, damn, that's cold. It's the only way a mountain giant could die. It had to be done. Did it, though? Worse betrayal than Arthas and the Mercs. Hey, easy on the spoilers there. <laughs> What mercs? Pepper hands. He's not gonna do something to betray their trust, is he? We have a third hero now, Priestess of the Moon. Bit of extra damage on the Naga and the Dryads with the True Shot and another hero to cast Orb of Venom. Does look like Sok's army is bigger uh, and quite difficult to take down. Every fork lightning hurts like hell though. And with the Demon Honor penetrating deeper and deeper into the army, we see some cracks starting to appear in the army of Sok. Select units drop low, bam, Fork Lightning comes in, and it's brutal. And there's no mana left on the Sorks, the Priests. Was it Wisps? Was it Overuse? It's hard to say. It looks like Moon is stabilizing. And he's also got Vision on Sok's third base, so he knows he's playing from the luxury of bonus money. Demon Hunter comes back in. It's level five and a half. A hero and a unit kill should be just about it to get level six and metamorphosis. But Sok will not be able to see it through to that end. His units have, va have been vaporized by Moon. And Moon does it again. Wonderful matchup. Great micro dodging those mortar shots. And even is willing to go all the way to do the most unthinkable. To sacrifice his own Gauntin Mayant. Mountain Giant to serve the Sentinel. Sick game. Well played. Very well played. And that's the end of that. I'll see you guys next game. Thanks for watching and sub to the grub.